Glib Audio Stories presents The Psychic, Episode 1, by Silas Maximo and Pinkleet. Rob wiped the sweat from his hands. He couldn't find his mom. He still didn't know if she was dead and, to be honest, was starting to believe that she was. But he'd found the next best thing, her brother. He didn't know if they'd ever met. If they had, it had been so early on that neither would recognize the other. Rob wouldn't remember his uncle, and his uncle wouldn't recognize the young man standing in front of him. Still, he knocked. But why was he so nervous? It wasn't like he wasn't used to knocking on doors and having them slammed in his face, so why? He didn't know what he was going to say, for a start. What was he supposed to say? Hi, my name's Rob. Uh, I know you don't remember me, but I'm your longest range nephew who your sister booked her ass away from first chance she got. Can I stay for dinner? Yeah, fuck that. He waited for the door to open, head empty, hands sweating, and feeling like he was going to throw up. As Rob knocked on the door, a man would open it. He had platinum, almost white, blonde hair and solid black eyes that almost bore into Rob's face. The tall gentleman would tilt his head slightly at the sight before him, then ask in a deep voice, Are you alright? You look ill. Rob didn't know what to say. He just stood there. What the fuck, Rob? Do something! He breathed in and said, I'm not sick. Uh, my name is Rob. I think, uh, is, is, <clears throat> is this, um, the, the, the workplace of, I think you're my uncle. Gideon would look confused for a split second, then realization would hit his face as he moved out of the doorway towards Rob. Robert, why are you here? He would ask, concerned, then looking both ways behind Rob. Come in, come in, he would say, gesturing for Rob to enter the building. If Rob came inside, he would see a long hallway of doors to his left and right, each with a nameplate. Gideon would lead him to one that read Payne, P-A-Y-N-E, but it looked like someone had taken a red sharpie and crossed out the Y and E and put an I over the Y so that it read Payne, P-A-I-N. He would open the door to a small office with a desk and a couch on the side of the wall. Please, sit. Why are you here? Rob looked around as he walked in. Okay, he really didn't think he'd get this far. What, now? The boy took a seat as he was offered and let out a breath he didn't know he'd been holding. Realizing he was fanning himself, nervous habit, he forced both hands into his lap where he stretched them. I'm actually looking for my mom, if I'm being honest he admitted. I just couldn't find her online, so I thought you might be able to help. Elizabeth, he would ask more as if confirming who he was looking for. Rob wouldn't answer the name. He didn't know his mother's first name. He couldn't even remember what she looked like. Our last name is Byrne, he said finally, if that helps. I can try to get you in contact with her, but just so you know, she's not in the state. I think I still have her phone number unless she changed it on me, he would say, writing some digits on a sticky note. When he started to write down the number, Rob's eyes lit up. He didn't think it would be that easy. He would hand it to Rob, then, looking at his face, Who hurt you? He would ask, his tone low. Rob frowned immediately at the question. What? Your injuries, Gideon would say, gesturing to the areas that looked black and blue. Did they try to perform an exorcism on you? Rob stood up, immediately shutting down. Thanks for the number. I'll try soon. Bye. I should... Hey, hey, don't run out, Gideon would say, standing up with Rob, especially in this office building. Running isn't allowed. I'm sorry if I was too blunt. Do you have a phone number on you to call Lizzie? He would ask. I have a phone, yeah. Do you have a place to stay for the night? Shit, he said under his breath, then louder. I've got a hotel, yeah. What hotel? Gideon would ask, clearly concerned for Rob. I could help you pay a month's stay so you can get on your feet. And if you want to go to school, I can help you there too. Look, I appreciate you helping me find my mom and everything, but I can't accept all that. I just met you and it's weird and honestly, I can't trust you. Look, don't take it personally, man. I'm just done putting my trust in anybody right now. Gideon would press his lips together, making them into a fine line. Then he would nod. You're right. You don't know me. He would sigh softly. How about this? I give you my number and address, too. If you need any help, you call and reach out to me and I will be there. No questions asked. He would say, writing down an address and phone number on another sticky note and handing it to Rob. You're not alone, Rob. 
Don't forget that. I went through what you're going through now, except I didn't have anyone on the outside, and you do. I know you need to find your own path, but you don't have to be alone while you do it. Rob would just watch him, just standing there silently. He took the paper when it was given to him and watched it lay limp in his hand. What, was he expecting it to do something? He sighed. Thanks. I'll... I'll be sure to call if I need it. No, he wouldn't. He was planning to throw it away as soon as he made it out that door. You don't have to be alone. Yeah, fuck that. Rob knew that was exactly what always happened. He would always be alone, and believing otherwise was stupid. Gideon would look at Rob for a moment, his eyes narrowing. He would nod. All right. I should also warn you, if you contact your mom, you may not get what you expect from her. Rob sighed. I don't expect much. He hoped she would even answer. He actually kind of assumed she was trying to hide from him, given everything. Gideon would sigh softly, sitting back down in his chair. Do you want me to get you anything? Water? Or he would be cut off by a knock at his door in an unfamiliar voice. Pain? Cogwright wants to see you in an hour. Gideon would sigh, then respond to the voice. Tell him I'm busy. Rob would listen to the short conversation and shake his head. I can go, actually. You seem like you have to get back to work. Gideon would shake his head. No, this is much more important. You are much more important, he would say. Is there anything you need? Food, clothes, money? He would ask. Again, that's cr- Weird. He made it a point not to say the word creepy. God, he hated that word. It had been used against him so many times for various reasons by his dad and many of the other people in his religion. I don't even think I ever got a nice to meet you. Gideon would blink, just now realizing how much etiquette he had just completely jumped over. He knew it was because of his wacky co-workers and their weird habits. Right, right. Sorry about that. Should we start again? He would say with a small smile. I'm Gideon Payne, your uncle. It's nice to finally meet you, Rob. Rob let out the smallest breath. He wasn't sure where to go from here. Sure, the man seemed like he just wanted to help. But so did many other people in his life, people who hurt him over and over again. If I may ask, how did you find me? Gideon would ask, his head tilting to the side as he looked at Rob. I, uh, you're kind of a big name where I grew up. He rubbed the back of his neck awkwardly. This kind of fit a coincidence, actually. Fate? No, Rob, you know better than that. I got curious about the pain shit, like, I was curious when I was younger, but I couldn't look it up without my dad finding out, so when I left, he waved his hand to imply the rest of his sentence. Well, I'd be happy to answer any questions about it if you want to know the truth, Gideon would say, leaning back in his chair. Rob cocked a brow. Really? I don't know if you'd like them very much. Eh, what harm can they do to me now? Gideon would say, swatting at the air as if pushing them out of the way. Besides, I don't think anyone will give you the full story besides myself. You know, you're told as a horror story to kids to get them straightened up. Apparently, you're a demon. Rob smirked slightly. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd love to be like that someday. His face fell. But, seriously, we're not even supposed to talk about you or what happened. That doesn't mean people don't, but... Oh, they're still scared of me? I mean... I really didn't do anything, Gideon would say, chuckling as if it were somewhat humorous. But it really shows how people can interpret things differently. What did you... I mean, what happened? He asked earnestly. I mean, we... They're not really supposed to talk about you, so... All I've really heard is that you're a demon and your dad was a priest and past that? Rob shook his head to indicate that he knew nothing. It was a situation they weren't supposed to talk about in the church, which, of course, only made Rob more curious. So, Gideon started, my father was the lead priest of the state delegation, which means he was in charge of a lot. My mother, your grandmother, was his third wife. The first two were never able to get pregnant, but then Elijah was born, then Lizzie, then me, he would say with a shrug. There were rumors that I wasn't his real child. I mean... I look nothing like anyone in the church. It didn't help that Lizzie and Elijah looked like them both, too. 
brown hair and blue eyes. Then I started to get sick. He would pause for a moment. It was my powers manifesting, but they didn't see it that way. All they knew was I was throwing up black sludge and that it must be the work of the devil, so they tried to purify me. I had to drink bleach, deal with the exorcisms, try to bleed the demon out of me. Nothing worked, of course, because it wasn't that. Looking back, all of it should have killed me if I wasn't psionic, so I learned to hide it. And I hid it well, but it just started to build up inside of me and I couldn't hold it in any longer. Rob's face fell as the man talked. What does that mean? Rob asked suddenly. Psionic. I've heard it before, but just in the context of it being creepy. Like, bad. It is a term used for people who have different abilities that others do not. Some can lift things with their mind or control plants. It varies from person to person, really. And, like people, it's not bad unless the person who has it uses it that way. There are a lot of good psionics as well as bad, though usually the good outnumber the bad, the bad make more headlines. Oh, was all he said. Then, was my mom psionic? He was curious, as he himself was, but he wasn't ready to reveal that yet. Nope, she isn't. There are only two recorded psionics from your mom's side, one of them being me. Who's the other one? Rob asked, brow furrowed in curiosity. Gideon would chuckle. My daughter and your cousin. You'd like her, though. She is a bit of a hugger. <laughs> Rob made a face at that. He needed a hug, but he was convinced he could do without them for a while, if not his whole life. And what if you could keep your, uh, stuff a secret? Would you have stayed in the religion? Gideon would answer without hesitation. No, I would not have. I saw a lot of things in there that made me lose faith in any higher power. Rob was silent after that, and he stared at the ground. Yeah, he knew that feeling. But... What he didn't know was how to feel about his father at this point. The man protected him and his warped way of thinking until he got fed up with it. Rob sighed. What about you? What made you finally decide to leave? Gideon would ask cautiously. Rob finally looked up at the question. I didn't. I was kind of pushed out. I mean, technically I wasn't disfellowshipped, but he shrugged. I was being shunned for like two years. Everyone avoided me like the plague, so I mean, I was kind of forced to try to make friends outside the religion. I, uh, <clears throat> never did, though. Of course you didn't. Talking to outsiders is looked down upon unless trying to bring them into the fold. Gideon would say with a laugh almost as if the idea was crazy. <sighs> but now that you're out, that can change. You're free. Rob let out a shallow laugh at that. Nah. It's not like I didn't try, but I was the weird kid. I was the kid who fanned himself like a fairy, the kid who always looked like he never slept, and worst of all, the kid who went door to door and tried to convince people to join a fucking cult. Of course I wasn't allowed to do that anymore, but they didn't know that, or they didn't give a shit. Gideon would listen to Rob. Well then, you'll make friends who don't care about those things and get to know the real you. Who like you for your personality and uniqueness and not look at the negative things? Rob scoffed. Maybe. Look, I don't need friends anymore. Humans are assholes. Find a fuck awful company. Gideon would laugh a deep, genuine laugh. <laughs> I agree with you on the last two statements, but having real friends isn't so bad. You'll make a few as time goes on. Rob would make a face at that. He wasn't so sure. He didn't mind it, though. No, it was fine. He likes being alone. Genuinely alone. You, of all people, should know. Being alone in a room full of people is a fuck ton worse than just being alone. Yes, it is. But being in a room with people at your side, having your back is damn good, too. But you wouldn't know that yet, Gideon would say with a wistful smile. Rob shook his head bitterly and muttered under his breath. That's a myth. People don't do that shit. You know, most of the people I work with are like us. They've run from people who don't get them. Rob looked up again. The hell are you talking about? It's not. I can prove it to you, Gideon would say, tapping his desk. Here, how about this? What would someone have to do to prove they care? That, through thick and thin, they will not abandon you. Rob scoffed. <laughs> Loaded question, but okay. 
Come on, I know you can think of something, Gideon would say with a smirk. I have no idea what you're on about, and you're kind of freaking me out, he would say without thinking. Gideon would raise his eyebrows. I am? Sorry about that, then, he would say with a half shrug. How about we talk about something else? Why don't you tell me about yourself? What types of things do you like to do? Yeah, no, Rob sighed. You're not getting that shit out of me. All right, then. I mean, I'm not gonna... Gideon would stop speaking for a moment, reaching down to pick up a wastebasket from under his desk. He would cough into it, a splash noise landing in the trash bag inside as he calmly set it back down as if nothing unusual had occurred. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me for that. As I was saying, I'm not going to force you to talk. Though, if you have any more questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Rob made an involuntary face at the splash, and he stood up. All right, uh, thanks, I guess. Yeah, not a pretty sound to hear, Gideon would say calmly. Sorry for that. I guess I should go. You don't have to if you don't want to. Though, I'll need to walk you out if you do. Rob blinked. Walk me out? Why? Gideon would answer, Because you aren't authorized to walk around the building freely, and I don't need my boss getting mad at me. Oh, right. Okay. He sighed and stared at the ground, before gesturing towards the door. You gonna show me out? Sure. He would say, standing up, opening the door for Rob. As they walked down the hall silently, another door would open by what seemed like floating clothes typing away on an iPad. Gideon would casually say to the clothes, you're invisible again, with the figure looking down and exclaiming shit before walking deeper into the building. Rob would jump at the sight, or rather at what he didn't see, and he would stare. The invisible man didn't seem to mind the staring. In fact, he ignored Rob as he walked briskly deeper into the building. Gideon didn't seem to be surprised by the invisible man, his focus on Rob. He would open the front door for Rob. Now, make sure to keep my number, okay? Call me anytime you need me, night or day. Rob would take a better look around. He ignored the question to ask, Are they all, you know, psionics? Not all of us, he would say, calmly shaking his head. Oh, okay. Maybe he would keep that number after all. Gideon would nod. You take the time you need to process all this and figure everything out. I'll be here when you're ready to talk again, or if you need any help. Well, thanks. Of course, Rob, Gideon would say with a smile. Rob would send a salute and be on his way. Gideon would watch Rob walk away, then turn into the building, shutting the door behind him. Who was that? A robotic voice would ask from a speaker nearby, a camera focusing on Gideon. Family, Gideon would say with a shrug. I'm coming now, Cogwright. Don't get your gears all twisted, he would say with a smirk, walking into the building. The robotic voice would chuckle, then growing silent as Gideon made his way to him. You have just finished The Psychic, Episode 1 of Glib Audio Stories. Thanks for listening!